all rise. The Commission on Judicial Appointments is now in session. The Honorable Patricia Guerrero presiding. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to the public hearing of the Commission on Judicial Appointments. As Chief Justice of California, I serve as chair of the commission. The other members of the commission are to my right, Attorney General Rob Bonta, and to my left, Acting Presiding Justice Ronald Roby. And Janelle Baker serves as the secretary to the commission. This hearing is to consider Governor Gavin Newsom's appointment of Justice Earl, Lori Earl to the Office of Presiding Justice for the Third District Court of Appeal. The commission is in receipt of a letter from Governor Newsom appointing Justice Earl to fill the vacancy that was created by the retirement of Justice Vance Ray. The state constitution specifies that the appointment by the governor to the Court of Appeal is effective when confirmed by the Commission on Judicial Appointments. The Commission has received correspondence pertaining to the appointment, and we made the letters available to the press and to the public a few days ago. Pursuant to a request by Governor Newsom, the State Bar's Commission on Judicial Nominees Evaluation, Jenny, has undertaken an evaluation of the qualifications of Justice Earl for this position. Mr. Justin Palmer, Chair of the Commission is present to share the results of the evaluation later in the proceedings. Justice Earl has asked that the following persons testify on her behalf. I will list all of you now and then call on you separately to the podium. The Honorable Louis Morrow, Associate Justice with the Third District Court of Appeal. It's nice to see you. Ms. Anne Marie Schubert, former District Attorney with the County of Sacramento, welcome and the Honorable Lee Smalley Edmund, Presiding Justice for the Second District Court of Appeal, Division Three. It's nice to see you. We first invite Justice Morrow to the podium. Thank you. Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta, and Acting Presiding Justice Roby. I am so pleased to have this opportunity to speak in support of Justice Lori Earle for the position of presiding justice at the Court of Appeal for the Third Appellate District. I've known Justice Earle since we worked together at the Sacramento County Superior Court. Justice Earle helped train me as a new trial judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember being very impressed by her knowledge of the law and her calm and patient interaction with others. Since then, as you know, she's done so many things, including serving as presiding judge of the Superior Court and helping to establish improved methods for trial court funding throughout the branch. Based on my work with Justice Earl and my knowledge of her, I can say without hesitation that she would be an outstanding presiding justice. There are many reasons why she is the right person for the job. Throughout her legal career, Justice Earl has demonstrated exceptional leadership, extraordinary integrity and character, and a commitment to the rule of law. She has always served with distinction. She cares deeply about improving the administration of justice and ensuring that our courts are accessible and fair for all. Naturally, she is poised and professional, but she also has a quiet wisdom and a warm heart. She is adept at listening to others and hearing them. I will also note that the Third Appellate District hasn't had a female presiding justice since Annette Abbott Adams retired in 1952, so it's time. <laughs> Now I can attest that our court has always been and continues to be comprised of hardworking, dedicated, and caring people. I am proud and honored to work with them. Justice Roby deserves credit for helping our court move forward during the latest transition. 
And I believe Justice Earl will continue our focus on strong public service, mindful of our court's rich history, but with a vision for the future. And so I urge you to confirm Justice Earl as presiding justice. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Morrow, for those remarks and the really beautiful portrait that you painted of your colleague. Thank you. We next invite to the podium Ms. Schubert. Good morning. Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta, Acting Presiding Justice Roby. I am honestly honored to speak in support of Justice Earl's nomination as the Presiding Justice of the Third DCA. To be clear, she's not just a colleague. She's been one of my best friends for over 25 years. History has a remarkable ability to reveal its most extraordinary leaders. Over 18 years ago, I had the privilege of speaking at then Judge Earl's swearing in as a trial court judge in Sacramento. And on that day in February of 2005, many people spoke of her history as both a public defender and a prosecutor. As a public defender, her commitment, her patience, and perhaps most importantly, her compassion for others defined her not just as a human being, but as a staunch advocate for justice. As a prosecutor, she was passionate, she was very persistent, she was a fierce advocate for crime victims, and she was a fierce advocate for seeking the truth. But as I have said often, she lived by the small but mighty quote in her office, there's more to being a prosecutor than getting a conviction. Long before post-conviction laws or criminal justice reform, Prosecutor Earl revealed not just her character, but her compassion and her willingness to balance the scales of justice in order to achieve a fair result. See, after convicting a young woman of murder with special circumstances, guaranteeing an LWAP sentence, Prosecutor Earl chose instead to seek a reduced sentence, ensuring the woman would someday be released, and released she was. Her work as an attorney on both sides of the aisle created faith in her future as a trial court judge. But while her past was perhaps a predictor of her future, her history as a trial judge was yet to be defined. And defined it was. Whether it be overseeing complex trials or managing a court with a multi-million dollar budget and hundreds of employees as a presiding judge, Judge Earl revealed her most extraordinary <coughs> leadership skills. Ask any of the stakeholders in the Sacramento court system, who are the best judges? Ask law enforcement, public defenders, prosecutors, dependency court attorneys, st court staff, and other judges. Judge Earl was always at the top of everyone's list. How could that be with the diversity of our criminal justice system? It's really quite simple. Brilliant, thoughtful, patient, compassionate, fair, and perhaps above all, she treats everyone with dignity and respect. But true leadership is often measured in times of crisis. After all, as others have said, anyone can hold the helm when the sea is calm. There is no greater demonstration of her holding the helm during a crisis than COVID-19. There's a reason why presiding judge Russ Holm tasked Judge Earl to take the helm and keep access to justice available to the 1.5 million people that the court serves. In the words of epidemiologist Mark Lipsitch, in the beginning of COVID-19, we were all clamoring to get into a life raft. Reaching safe and dry land was far trickier and demanded a viable long-term plan. For our court and for our entire community, that life raft, light raft and long-term plan came from Judge Earl. Perhaps the best description of her during those historic times came at her confirmation hearing for the third. In describing her leadership navigating the court through the pandemic, Judge Mike Bowman rightly said, Judge Earl didn't reinvent the wheel, she invented it. When asked by Justice 
then Chief Justice Cantil Sakaui, what she looks forward to the most as an appellate justice. Judge Earl humbly replied, I am a student of the law. I look forward to learning what I don't know. The words of John F. Kennedy bear the bold truth, quote, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. <clears throat> As a student of the law, Justice Earl's insatiable desire to learn will only undoubtedly prove to be indispensable as she leads the third DCA as the next presiding justice. As a student of the law, Justice Earl has often been guided by role models such as Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her passion for equality and justice. Defining Justice Ginsburg's legacy is perhaps one of her most iconic quotes on leadership. Whatever path, whatever you choose to do, leave tracks. That means don't do it just for yourself. You will learn, you will want to leave the world a little better for having lived. As a human being filled with compassion and kindness and love for others, Justice Earl has been leaving tracks since the day she was born. As an attorney and as a jurist, she's been leaving tracks since the first time she walked into a courtroom. Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta, Justice Roby, History has, in fact, revealed one of its most remarkable and extraordinary leaders, and I'm honored to support her nomination today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schubert. I'm sure with 25 years, you had a difficult time figuring out what to say because there's so much to say about Justice Earl. You did a remarkable job. Thank you. And we next invite to the podium Justice Edmund. Good morning. Good morning. Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta, Acting Presiding Justice Roby. I am so honored and happy today to speak in support of the appointment of Justice Lori Earl as Presiding Justice of the Third Appellate District. I can attest that she is perfectly suited for that role because over the years, I have witnessed Lori Earle's extraordinary leadership. I first met Justice Earle when we were both involved in the leadership of our respective courts. During the years 2010 through 2013, first as assistant presiding judges and then presiding judges, Lori in the Sacramento Superior Court and myself in LA. I've heard it said that the job of a presiding judge of the trial court can be described as a roller coaster, or Mr. Toad's wild ride. <laughs> I think these are pretty apt descriptions. Each day is filled with ups and downs, twists and turns, constant surprises, never a dull moment. But I dare say our years in leadership of our respective courts was even more challenging than usual. Because in the aftermath of the 2008 recession, we were facing unprecedented budget cuts to the judicial branch of literally hundreds of millions of dollars. And each court was struggling to try to figure out how to keep the lights on and the doors of the courthouses open, literally. As it turned out, there was a group of remarkable women who happened to be in leadership in courts around the state at that time. And a few of us decided to work together to discuss how to keep day-to-day -day operations going and our courts functioning. In addition to Justice Earl and myself, there was Catherine Feinstein, then presiding judge of the San Francisco Superior Court, Cheryl Ellsworth, then presiding judge of the Riverside Superior Court, and now US District Court Judge Beth Freeman, then presiding judge of the Santa Clara Superior Court. This gang of five, plus our court executives, met frequently to discuss the issues we were facing, primarily actions necessitated by our budget cuts such as staff layoffs, courthouse and courtroom closures, and the like. Managing change is always difficult, and the changes being made at that time impacted our judges, the court staff, law enforcement, the bar, and the communities we served. Informing, involving, and creating buy-in with those stakeholders was a major leadership issue in order to maintain access to justice. And there's nothing like a crisis to bring people together, right? Over the course of many meetings, 
I learned that those four women were all strong, courageous leaders, incredibly bright and creative, but also consensus builders who cared very much about justice and the continued operation of their courts. Lori Earle, in particular, demonstrated the ability to work and collaborate effectively with colleagues, a trait so important for the presiding justice on the appellate court. Thankfully, the friendships we forged in that group have endured, we became fast friends, and we had each other's backs. That was my first opportunity to see Justice Earle's leadership skills in action, but that was only the beginning. As the impact of budget cuts were being felt across the state, a question arose about how judicial branch budget dollars should be allocated. It was generally acknowledged at that time that there was an unfair distribution of resources among trial courts statewide based on a funding formula that was tied to what individual courts used to receive from their counties before we went to statewide funding rather than being based on workload. As the competition for budget dollars increased, as you can imagine, the trial courts, the council, and the legislature became concerned over the unfair distribution of resources. And Governor Brown basically sent the message that there would be no additional money for the branch until the branch changed its funding formula. To address the problem, then Chief Justice Kantil Sakoe turned to Lori Earle. The chief appointed a working group, chaired by then Judge Earle, to study and develop metrics for workload and equitable funding for trial courts across the state, something that had never been done. The working group was made up of trial court presiding judges, including myself, and executive officers from across the state. It was a very complicated problem indeed in light of the myriad of conditions courts faced in the 58 counties. And as you can probably imagine, everyone at the table had a dog in that hunt. <laughs> probably not surprising, the effort was initially met with much resistance. There were several courts that stood to have their annual allocations significantly reduced. Judge Earl put the leaders from those courts on the committee, believing that it was better to have them at the table than in, involved in the discussions rather than outside throwing stones. To say the least, the committee members did not always agree, but we respected each other's positions and were committed to working through difficult issues for the interest of all of California's court users. And in my view, that was largely due to Lori's leadership. Lori set the tone for the group's work, making clear that we're all involved in a shared mission to dispense justice efficiently across the state. She listened patiently to each and every perspective. And after having heard each perspective, she had no problem making tough decisions when necessary. She built trust and credibility among the working group members, treating everyone with respect. And she made it clear that she understood the real impact the budget cuts were having on each county. Remarkably, Judge Earl steered that very diverse group, each of whom had so much at stake, to compromise and consensus. In the end, the work group developed metrics based on each court's workload that were incredibly complex, the workload-based allocation and funding methodology, fondly known as WAFM. <laughs> it was adopted by the council and is basically still the foundation of how the trial courts get funding today. Largely in acknowledgement of her significant work on this working group, Judge Earl was awarded the Ronald M. George Award for Judicial Excellence from the Judicial Council. Over the years, Justice Earl and I worked together on the Judicial Council and on the Judicial Council Trial Court presiding Judges Advisory Committee. Having seen Judge Earl in action, I know she will be an outstanding presiding justice. She is not just an exceptional leader and jurist, but an exceptional person. She is kind and warm. She loves her court. I know she is committed to making the work environment collegial and collaborative by keeping an open mind and a willingness to listen and cares very much about her colleagues. You can't ask for more. I am very grateful to Governor Newsom and Secretary Cespedes for the nomination of Judge Earl 
as Justice Earl, as presiding justice of a third district, I urge you to confirm her to that position. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Edmund, for providing that very important component of Justice Earl's background. And I know the court and throughout the state is thankful to you and the other Gang of Five, too. Thank you. <laughs> um, the commission now invites the chair of the Judicial Nominees Evaluation Commission, Mr. Justin Palmer, for the report and evaluation that was conducted by his commission. I do this every time. <laughs> you never need a microphone. <laughs> oh, that's what my grandmother said. Uh, Madam Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta, and Acting Presiding Justice Roby. My name is Justin Palmer, and I am honored to present this report. On behalf of the Commission of Judicial Nominees and Evaluation, to summarize the basis of the Commission's rating of Justice Lori Earle, for the Office of Presiding Justice of the Court of Appeal, 3rd Appellate District. The Jenny Commission conducted its evaluation of Justice Earl on February 18, 2023, finding her to be exceptionally well qualified for service on the 3rd District Court of Appeal. According to Commission's rules, that rating reflects the Commission's determination that Justice Earl possesses qualities and attributes of remarkable or extraordinary superiority that enable her to perform the appellate judicial function, judicial function, excuse me, with distinction. Justice Earl spent the first half of her childhood in San Jose before her parents uprooted the family and moved to Modesto. She returned to the Bay Area to attend the University of California, Berkeley, and received her BA in 1983. She earned her JD in 1989 from Lincoln Law School of Sacramento. Justice Earl's legal experience as a litigator and as a jurist is extensive. She worked as a district attorney for nine years, a public defender for six years, and a superior court judge for 16 years, presiding over general trials, civil writs of Van Davis, and juvenile dependency. As a trial judge, she earned the confidence of her peers who voted for her to serve as assistant presiding judge and thereafter as presiding judge. Justice Earl masterfully conveyed her administrative skills during the state's fiscal crisis during the 2012 to 2013 years, working with court executive staff to reduce court services without compromising justice. Outside of the courtroom, Justice Earl has extensively given back to her community by mentoring high school students, coordinating high school educational and cultural exchange program, participating in Habitat for Humanity Women Build, a program for home building projects, and teaching at Lincoln Law School since 2014. She's also been appointed to serve on numerous committees, including those for the Judicial Council, Appellate Court, and Trial Court. In her free time, she likes to hike, bike, spend time with her kids, garden, attend plays, and go camping. Justice Earl's extensive experience with court administration will be an asset in her role as presiding justice. Justice Earl received a chorus of praise from colleagues and litigants praising her humility, judicial temperament, leadership, thoroughness, ethics, and insight. She is widely regarded as the go-to person statewide for court operations, practices, and procedures. For all these reasons, the Commission determined that Justice Earl is exceptionally well qualified for service as presiding justice for the Third District of Appeal. Per the request of Justice Earl, I have removed all references that she is the best candidate that the Jenny Commission has ever seen. <laughs> and as Jenny Commission Chair, it's my honor and privilege to provide this report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer, as always, for your detailed report. We um, appreciate it. We now invite to the podium Justice Earl to present a statement, if you wish, and to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney Gentle Bonta, 
and Acting Presiding Justice Roby. Uh, I'm honored to be here, and I'm prepared to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I'll just have a short question, but I'll start with a comment. I, I really appreciated the, the witnesses' beautiful uh, testimonies about you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, loved hearing about your compassion and your empathy and your kindness and your patience, which is so important, of course, in, in all that we do as human beings, but certainly in the courtroom where important decisions are being made about the future of people's lives. And um, really appreciate your problem solving approach and um, the demeanor that you took uh, in very difficult times, really important for, for, for leaders. and. Um, the dignity and respect that you give all those who, who come before you, and, and also that importance of, of listening and uh, knowing that we don't know everything and always wanting to learn and be better. Appreciate all those qualities that were just really beautifully highlighted by your, your witnesses, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, just a question about um, serving as presiding justice. What do you think will be the biggest challenges that you'll have, and what opportunities do you see? Um, well. In terms of opportunity, I enjoy court administration, so I'm looking forward to getting back involved in that both locally and also on a statewide level. I think, as you pointed out, there's there's some reward in problem solving. I learned that really well when I did a dependency assignment, when you spend that time to work with families on, on reaching solutions. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to getting back into court administration. Um, in terms of challenges, I don't know what I don't know, but I also know that uh, you know, budgets change, uh, pandemics occur. So I think being able to anticipate mm. those times when uh, things are not as stable as they are right now. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with our administrative team to try to stay one step ahead of, of the unknown if you can, so. Thank you, Justice Earl. I look forward to confirming your nomination. Thank you. Justice Roby? Well, I don't have a question either. Uh, I can have a few comments I'd like to make though. Uh, Lori, you're superbly qualified for this job. And during the uh, year that I've been acting, uh, I've kept you involved in everything uh, that I've done because I thought you'd probably be waiting in the line. And uh, you know, when Justice uh, Morrow mentioned that uh, we had a female presiding justice, he didn't mention another fact that uh, more than 80 years ago when Governor Olson appointed Annette Abbott Adams, she was the first woman appellate justice in California, the very first woman, and also the very first presiding justice because she was the only one. And now that Governor uh, Newsom has appointed you to head our court, you're breaking new ground again because you'll be the first lesbian administrative presiding justice. And I'm very proud to be part of this today. Um, Justice Earl, you've worked in so many different capacities and leadership roles through your career. And we heard a little bit about the great work that you did in helping to develop the workload allocation formula at Waffham. Yet you still want to do more. <laughs> so first, thank you. <laughs> and uh, second, what motivates you to want to continue serving in this new role? You know, I care very much about access to justice, and I care very much about our court and our colleagues. And I think there's, um, I think I have something to contribute. I think there's always more that we can do to make use of our courts more friendly uh, to members of our community, uh, to um, populate our bench with people who look like the litigants that come before us. So I think um, whatever I can do, the small part I can play, in um, opening the doors to our courtrooms for people who are less fortunate than myself is something I'd like to do. Thank you, thank you again. This completes the list of witnesses who are testifying here today. Are the members of the commission prepared to vote? All in favor of confirming Justice Lori Earl for the position, please say aye. 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 On this record and correspondence received, the commission finds Justice Earl qualified to be presiding justice for the third district court of appeal we confirm her appointment. Congratulations, Justice Earl. The formal portion of the hearing is adjourned. Justice Earl has asked that I administer the oath. 
and we'll do that in a few moments. You're all welcome to attend that as well after we sign some paperwork. Thank you. Third Appellate District, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Lori Earl. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, Chief Justice Guerrero, uh, A.G. Bonta, and Justice Roby for making yourselves available today. And um, A.G. Bonte, it's good to see you in person. My, my last experience in this was remote, so this is kind of a, a nice celebration. Um, I also want to thank Governor Newsom and his Judicial Appointment Secretary, Luis Cespedes, for uh, this appointment and for the trust that they have um, placed in me. I do not take that lightly. I will strive every day to live up to those expectations, and I, I am and Incredibly grateful. Thank you to my incredible colleagues. I'm so excited that you made uh, the trip here today um, and that your support for me means the world. I um, recognize that uh, I'm fairly new and I will work tirelessly to nurture the trust that I hope uh, continues to grow between us. Um, thank you to our wonderful administrative leadership. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Justice Roby, who took the reins at a difficult time for our court and led us uh, through with so much grace and dignity. Uh, it was incredible. You are a trusted mentor, and I'm so lucky to have you. Don't you make me cry. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Uh, Colette Brugman, Todd Eister, Una Mallet, Kelly Ryan, Dave Warner are incredible, and the support and preparation they have given me as we uh, embarked upon this journey has been wonderful. I look forward to continuing our work together. I'm really proud of this court. Um, at this particular moment in time, we are astounding, I think. Um, I'm proud of our staff, attorneys, clerks, judicial assistants, our famous and fabulous librarian. All are incredibly hardworking and care greatly about our court. Uh, the justices who serve on our court are so very thoughtful about the appellate court's role in the judicial system. To a person, they strive to reach the right conclusion, their collaboration makes our work product exceptional. Uh, thank you to my fellow administrative presiding justices, uh, Brad Hill, Mary Greenwood, and Jim Humes who are here today. Uh, Judy McConnell and Elwood Louie couldn't join us, but they both reached out to congratulate me um, and have already taken me into their fold. I look forward uh, to working together. Uh, my mom, Joyce, my sisters, Katie and Trish, could not join today, brothers-in-law, Stephen, I'm sorry, Steve and Trevor, uh, but I know they're watching and I feel their support as I always do. I'm so blessed to have so many of you who have joined me uh, in the courtroom today. Again, this is a celebration that I didn't necessarily get the first time around. Um, dear friends and supporters of mine who are here, and my staff, my incredible staff, my attorneys, Emily and Kim, uh, my, the, the best judicial assistant, Beth Nelson, thank you for being here today. Um, they make me look way better than I am, I'm telling you that. Um, it is all of you who've really made me a better lawyer and a better judge and a better person. You've really helped kind of mold me into the person that I am. 
and it strikes me that you will bear some responsibility if I screw this up. So um, <laughs> thank you for that. It's comforting. So, uh, it's just a, in, an incredible day for me. One I never dreamed that would happen when I embarked on a, a law school career. Um, and none of it would have happened without my wife and partner of over 30 years, Jody Cooperman. She believed in me when I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing, but she was always there. And our two incredible boys, Josh and Sam, who teach me every day about the value of acceptance, honesty, and integrity. They live their lives so authentically, it warms my heart. Thank you.